In problem number 37 of section 3.6, we generalized the last problem that we did. Where we found that uh, found a formula for uh, the surface area obtained by rotating the graph of some function f of x, continuous function, um, around the line y equals mx, uh, with the assumption that um, f is greater than f of x is greater than mx. The graph uh, lies always above the line on the interval that we're rotating about. Uh, well, now we're going to generalize this and ask what's the area if we obtained if we rotate it around an arbitrary line, so if it's not a line through the origin. So recall uh, that this was the formula uh, that we found in the last problem. And the setup for this problem is similar. We'll have to do a little bit more work to find a, a formula for the distance uh, between uh, the function and the line, which was kind of the crucial point of um, the crucial part of the last problem. So we have the line y equals mx plus b. And we have graph of uh, f of x. And we want to rotate it about uh, the line y equals mx plus b on the interval uh, a to c. So the so this is what we're um, this is the section of the graph of f of x that we're rotating around the line, and what we really would like to know is this distance here, I call that d. And once we know that distance, we can just find the uh, formula in exactly the same way. So remember that this was um, as part of the integrand of the formula for the previous for the last problem was uh, just the distance between the function and the line y equals mx. So now we've got to find the distance between uh, the function y equals mx plus b. And the easiest way to do that is just we find, well, we know what a formula is for the distance between um, the function and um, y, between the function and the line y equals mx. So we can just find the difference, uh, or the distance between the two lines. Then we'll be able to find, um, we'll be able to take the, take the total distance, subtract the distance between the two lines. And that'll give us the um, distance that we want. So let's call this distance here, um, let's call it delta. In order to find this distance, uh, rather than finding it um, it's just an arbitrary point between the two lines, let's just move the distance between the two lines is going to be the same no matter where we are on the lines. So let's instead try to find the distance between um, the point, or between the two lines at the point on the line y equals mx plus b, where it intercepts, uh, intersects the y axis. So in this case, um, this line is going to be uh, the line that with slope uh, has slope of the negative, with slope equal to the negative reciprocal of the slope of uh, these two lines, which, so the slope will just be y equals negative 1 over uh, mx, and with intercept b. So call that line y1, or, yeah, or say, call that line l1. It has equation y equals negative 1 over mx plus b. And um, just say that L2, just let that be um, our line y equals mx plus b. Or, excuse me, y equals um, mx. So the line with slope m going through the origin. So if we can find the point of intersection, 
uh, let's call that, say, x1. If we find this point of intersection, then we can just use um, the Pythagorean theorem and figure out what delta is. So the point where these two lines intersect, we just set the y value, or um, set them equal. Get negative 1 over m uh, x1 plus b is equal to m times x1. And solving for x1, we get, so we get m plus 1 over m x1 is equal to b, and we divide both sides by m plus 1 over m, we get x1 equals b times m plus 1 over m. This is formula for the uh, intercept of the line y equals mx and the line perpendicular to it. So next we need to find the value of uh, delta. This picture is a little small, so I'm going to redraw the area that we're interested in a little bit bigger. So we want this distance here, but we know that um, we know the sides of the two or the two sides of the triangle I just marked in red. Well, the bottom is just x one, and the height is just going to be well. This is the point uh, y equals or x equals zero, y equals b. So total height is just going to be uh, b minus. Uh, b minus the height of um, x1 on, or height on the line y equals mx corresponding to x1. So b minus m times x1. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the value, say that delta squared is equal to well, x1 squared plus uh, the quantity b minus x1 squared. This means that delta is equal to uh, plus or minus x1 squared plus b minus mx1 squared. And of course, we're, we want delta to be um, a length, so we want to take the positive uh, value of the square root. All right, so going back to what we were originally trying to find, the uh, surface area obtained by, or area of the surface obtained by rotating f of x around um, just a general line, y equals mx plus b. Uh, we see that we can just use the same strategy that we used for um, finding the surface area obtained by, or area of the surface obtained by rotating around the x-axis or the line y equals mx plus b, just using the fact that we now know what, uh, our, what distance is. So the, we know the total distance between um, between the graph of f of x and the line y equals mx. Uh, so this is uh, delta plus d. Uh, we have a formula for that. That's just um, f of x minus mx over the square root of m squared plus 1. And now that we know what delta is, we can solve for uh, right. We can solve for d, which is the quantity that we are interested in. So d, as a function of x, is equal to the absolute value of f of x minus m x. And 
minus delta. So minus square root of x1 squared plus b minus m x1. And I believe I just erased it, but the value of And then, of course, the value of x1 is equal to b over m plus 1 over m. So the final formula for the area, area of the surface obtained by rotating f of x around the line y equals mx plus b is the integral from a to c now times the circumference, or of uh, the circumference times an infinitesimal thickness. So circumference is just 2 pi times uh, d of x times, uh, I should give myself a little bit more room. times the infinitesimal thickness, which is uh, 1 plus f prime of x squared dx.